Oh, hi. Um, uh, my name is Kang Ming. I am currently working at Booking.com Employer, uh, otherwise known as Gugat. So I'm here to introduce, introduce a Perl module that we wrote in here, uh, sorry, in the company, so to work with uh, Elasticsearch. So the name of this module is called Hike, or whatever. Uh, uh, so yes, so what is Hike? It's a, it's a very specialized, uh, special purpose HTTP client. It's a very, very thin client. It has about only 200 lines of Perl code, pure Perl, and more document than code. And so it, it can talk to HTTP 1.1 server, which basically assumes a persistent, persistent connection. That means one connection can uh, serve multiple requests. And, and it deals with uh, read and connection timeout separately. So by specialized, it means that uh, this library does really just one job, just to send the data over the wire. So uh, this is how it looks like when you use it. So you really need to pass all these parameters, and it's pretty low level. Uh, it does no param uh, validation or character escape for you, so you really need to deal with this in advance. And but so it looks a little bit uh, uh, verbose, but and it also does not do all these fancy things that most of the uh, uh, HTTP library in the Perl in the on CPN does. Like it does so. Uh, if you know HTTP a little bit, you probably guess that this is not really for uh, writing a web robot or, or that kind of thing. So it, it, it does not support a lot of things, basically. It's really low level. So you might wonder why do I even bother writing in the first place. So, uh, so, 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 but if we look back to Elasticsearch, so if we make a very simple request to Elasticsearch, this is what we got. So the, the response is not important. The, in, the important part is that Elasticsearch pretty much just used two HTTP headers for all its response. Nothing else. So there, you, you, you won't even get like redirect from Elasticsearch. No. So uh, most of the, so then the, all the code tried to process those headers are just dead code in a sense. So uh, turns out if we write a very specialized HTTP client like this, it has a lot of use cases too. So uh, basically speaking, uh, we, uh, I figured out that it's very suitable if you have a database server that just use HTTP interface for no good reasons. So, <coughs> uh, so but basically that, that also means that if you can control or configure the server, like the, the server is in your hand, then uh, this, is, this probably fits the use case. So like, so no, Generic, generic web crawling, that kind of thing. So uh, also we find out that uh, I think there are about seven AHTB libraries when they deal with client timeout, like it, it takes too long to connect, almost all of them just die. And then to capture this timeout, we really literally need to capture the all different kinds of exception formats, which is, we're well, doing exceptional programming. So we do it slightly, a little bit friendly. So. After all this, like all this big hassle of writing very verbose code, there's a very great benefit that is the benchmark. The, so uh, this really uh, outspeed LWP like 10 times or more, depends on the use case. Uh, we figured that if the response are generally small, like kilobytes, that this works very, very well. So uh, uh, there's another guy who did a different benchmark to, and with more HTTP library. So he figured out that, uh, well, in his case, uh, it, the hack is even faster than curl, which is mostly C code. So this is just pure pro. So uh, it's, I don't know that it's even doing that good. So this is a comment from my coworker. So after we test this, like we, we really decided to pull this full on everywhere, replacing LWP internally. So, so yeah, so it's a small one, but it does its job really nice and fast. So if you're, everybody's interested, uh, search on GitHub for Hike. I believe this name is pretty unique. Uh, uh, so, and it's already released and we've been using it on production for a while. So thank you for listening. <laughs>